Hi guys and welcome to another video on Sonal's Life. So for everyone who's been watching um, New Japan over the last few weeks, you'll know that we're in our summer struggle tour. And literally last week, so between Thursday and Sunday, we had the tournament for the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Team Championships. That was a bit of a mouthful, so I had to say it very slowly. So if anyone doesn't know the context behind the tournament, so basically back in January, Evil, Shingo, Takagi and Bushi won the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Titles, which is basically um, three titles which are four against all divisions and it's, it's open weight basically. But when Evil decided to leave LIJ and go to Bullet Club, something which I am still bitter about to this day, they didn't really know what to do with the titles. Evil said that he didn't want to defend them, he didn't see the point in them. And I don't think New Japan found it fair to just use like a free bird rule and just switch an LIJ member. So they decided to have this tournament which was eight different teams, two brackets over four days. And it was like a single elimination team. We had two teams from Chaos, Two teams from Hontai, Suzuki Goon, LIJ and a Bullet Club one. I think that's all of them. Oh no, we had two Suzuki Goon ones. I always thinking like, which one did I forget yet? And this was done at Korokun Hall. It was a really good tournament. Like it had a, like so many different wrestlers. So you had like Suzuki, Doki, Desperado. Then you had a team of Golden Ace, of Tanahashi, Nabushi and Master Wata. Then you had Chaos, which was Yano, Sho and Okada. There's literally everybody's favourite wrestlers there and I just think like I don't want to make this sort of like a looking at each match but there's some really standout matches throughout each round so for me like in the first round it was Suzuki Goon's Taichi Desperado and no that's a lie Taichi, Zack Sabre Jr and Kanemaru versus Tanahashi, Ibushi and Master Wato then second round it was Okada, Sho and Yano versus Bushi, Shingo and Sonata that one personally is a favourite because not because like, it's amazing wrestling, but it's an actually hilarious match. And then the final match, which was Chaos's Okada Show and Yano versus another Chaos faction, well, the, another Chaos team, Hiroki Goto, Tomohiro Ishii, and Yoshihashi. That's the thing about it. You saw matchups that you would never expect. Like, nobody would ever expect a Chaos versus Chaos match. Never mind a Chaos versus Chaos final for a tournament with, like, one of the best in the world, Okada, and then a jokester in Yano, and then Tomohiro Ishii. It was actually, like, amazing. And I think we really got to see some standout people throughout the tournament that you didn't really know. So, for example, Sho really shined. Bushi did really well. And, who are, well, we all know, like, Tanahashi, dis despite everything that was going on in their storyline, also did amazing. However, for me, I think the main big thing to come out of this tournament was congratulations Yoshi Hashi finally winning a title and I know that might sound like sarcastic but I am actually genuinely happy for him and for anyone who doesn't know like why this is such a big thing Yoshi Hashi has been in the company for I literally don't know how long it's been like probably nearly 10 years more than that and he has not won a single title to put that into perspective like that hardly ever happens. Most wrestlers in New Japan will have some sort of title reign, some tournament win, even if it is something like the Never Titles, or maybe it's a tag league or something like that. Yoshihashi has never done that. And some people say it's because he's boring, he's very average. I have to admit, like, when I first started watching Yoshihashi, I was a bit like, there's nothing, there was no, like, mass appeal, so you, he didn't have the star-like qualities of an Okada Tanahashi. He wasn't funny like Yano, he wasn't powerful like Sho, and it was almost like he was sort of blending into the background. But one thing that Yoshihashi has that I think everyone's taken, he has this heart and determination. No matter how many times he gets knocked down, he gets back up again. Whether it's not being in the G1, literally the fact that he tried during the time when Jay White deflected from Chaos to Bullet Club, when Yoshihashi ran out to save Okada and basically fell and busted his nose open. Like, he keeps getting up, he's coming back for those opportunities. And like his tights say, like, he never gives up. And I think through this tournament, he has shown that he's so good. He got the win over Golden Ace and Master Wato. But I think more, he's not like the big standout talent, I think he's just very subtle in the sense that he's very good at keeping chaos together, like he 
can work well in any combination. So for example in World Tag Leagues he's worked with Okada, he's worked with Goto, I think he might have worked with Ishii but I'm not sure on that. In big tag matches like the 10 man he always chooses his bit and like as much as I like take the mix from there, he does have a good finisher. Like his karma is a really nice move. Even though I'm not a fan of his submission, the I think it's the butterfly lock. But I think like I saw something quite cute on Facebook and it was like twenty like Yoshihashi is the man we need in 2020. He is the man that's literally personally I think he just represents like the normal person. Like he keeps trying hard and you know it doesn't always work out, but he finally got his star moment. And at the end of the video, I'm just going to post, um, I'm going to add a little, little video from a post-match comments he did from the tournament. And sometimes you just think, oh. And when you watch it, you'll think, right, no matter what happens, like, I support you, Yoshihashi. And I remember I posted this on um, a website and someone literally went, I'm not a fan of Yoshihashi, but even I'm happy for it. For me, if, if I could make one more person than Yoshihashi fan, then I will, because... Like I said before, he is such a relatable person and yes, he might not be like the best looking or the best athlete but he tries his hardest and sometimes what well, people love an underdog and Yoshihashi is the biggest underdog in New Japan that there actually is. And I realised that this video has gone from um, the tag title tournament review to a bit of a Yoshihashi appreciation post but I think it's a big thing. Like. In wrestling, we don't have enough feel-good moments, and I think that was a feel-good moment that everyone's going to remember. It had crowds excited, Milano on commentary started crying, like everyone wanted him to have that moment and he did. So yeah, make sure you go and watch it. Go and see all the matches, the ones that I recommended. Watch the post-match comments because there are some really good things that are coming out of it. So obviously at the end of the month we've got the big show at Jingu Stadium and we've got three title matches set for then. We've got Evil vs Naito for the IC and the Heavyweight Championship, Hiromu vs Ishimori for the Junior and then crazily we're going to have Sh um, Shingo Takagi vs Minoru Suzuki for the Openweight titles and then we've got the King of Pro Wrestling concept that Okada um, proposed, I couldn't think of the word then. We've got some matches for there and I'll try and link the press conference somewhere so you sort of know what that's going to be about. So it's going to be an amazing month for wrestling and that tournament was a great way to kick off August. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the tournament like I did and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like always, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you want to see. You can follow me on social media at wrestling underscore chat on Twitter and then the rest of the links will be in the description and I will see you guys next week.